The Guardian published an article advocating a 100% inheritance tax. If you're unfamiliar with what they're referring to, the inheritance tax, or the death tax, is a tax on one's wealth when they die, before being inherited by the family of the person who died. What the Guardian is arguing is that the government should seize all of your wealth so you cannot pass it on to your next generation. And this is something we've started to hear more and more about, the death tax as a solution to income inequality. It's not only this article is what I'm saying. This is something that's sort of been brewing among the political left and will continue. I would but like to on, tax them at higher salary. rates across the board on okay. their salary, on their investments, and also on what they're passing to the future, future generations. Okay. I want to see the death tax go up. The author writes, yes, the desire to pass on property to your descendants may be natural, but why should we be slaves to our biology? Notice how she uses the word slaves as if the desire to pass on something to our children is some form of oppression. She continues, in contemporary times, most people agree that tax should facilitate transfer of wealth from those who have to those who need. No, that's not what taxes are for, and most people do not agree. Taxes are not so we can redistribute wealth. Taxes are to pay for government and the military. But what if the desires of the dead directly damage the well-being of the living? Is there any situation in which the previous instructions of someone no longer actually present in the mortal realm should be prioritized over the needs, interests, and opinions of those who are still alive and kicking? Newsflash, it's not your money. You have no right to that money. Nobody is damaging you. Not giving you their money is not an attack on you. It's not damaging you. It's not your money. You have no right to it. In the UK, official statistics suggest around 77 billion pounds is passed on in inheritance each year. That's money that no living being has a moral claim to, according to standard justifications of wealth inequality and private property. So I have no idea what she's talking about here. Who is standard justifications of wealth, inequality, and private property? I think that's a fancy way of saying, according to her opinion on wealth and inequality, cultural norms teach us that the inheritance of private property is the default and any expropriation of this wealth must be justified. It should be the other way around. There's some value in respecting the wishes of the dead, yes, but why is that more important than social housing, health care, or any number of other possible uses for that money? Is there any reason their needs should matter less? Well, if we're talking about the person's money, that they've earned, then yes, they get to decide what they want to do with their money that they've earned, and they get to prioritize how they want to spend it after they die. It's not your money. But if you think there's no harm in seizing the inheritance tax, you're wrong. The only way in which you can redistribute effectively the wealth is by destroying the incentives to have wealth. And the question is, what is the way, what is the system which will offer those people who are so unlucky as to be born without uh, good positions, what is the system which will offer them the greatest opportunity? Well, one possible way of redistributing the wealth without affecting the incentives to earn as much income as possible is simply to have a 100% inheritance tax. Uh, but Since that, that won't not... affect the incentives, it's only after the person's I dead your, anyway. I beg your pardon. Uh, you're too, uh, I'm afraid, uh, uh, I don't know the family you come from. <laughs> I don't, uh, but as you grow up, you will discover that this is really a family society and not an individual society. We tend to talk about an individualist society, but it really isn't. It's a family society. And the greatest incentives of all, the incentives that have really driven people on, have largely been the incentives of family creation, of family of pursuing, of establishing their families on a decent system. What is the effect of 100% inheritance tax? The percent of a 100% inheritance tax is to encourage people to dissipate their wealth in high living. What's they can't the harm in that? It. The harm in that is that where do you get the factories? Where do you get the machines? Where do you get the capital investment? Where do you get the incentive to improve technology? If what you're doing is to establish a society in which the incentive is for people who, if they have by accident accumulate some wealth to waste it in frivolous entertainment. You know, the thing is that the thing that is amazing that people don't really recognize is the extent to which the market system has, in fact, encouraged people and enabled people to work hard and sacrifice in what I must confess I often regard as an irrational way for the benefit of their children. One of the most curious things to me in observation is that almost all people value the utility which their children will get from consumption higher than they value their own. Here are parents who have every reason to expect that their children will have a higher income than they ever had. And they scrimp and save in order to be able to leave something for their children. I think you are sort of like a bull in a china shop if you talk about 
the 100% inheritance tax having no incentive effects, it would destroy a continuing society. It would destroy a society. It would destroy 